Hi friends, Christina Sparkbird Studios here. And earlier today, I went looking for a project to start that would be for the JJ Mask Make March hashtag, the one where you're making multiple pieces of ephemera for your journals. And I came across these bags, of which I have a gazillion. Okay, maybe I have like 30. Um, but I looked at them and I thought, well, gee, there's something there. And I know a lot of people do things with bags for their journals. Um, I had never done it. I don't have a bag in any journal I've ever made. But I was looking at this and realized how much this looked like an envelope. And thought, oh, that could be fun. And I thought, well, I'll just take it apart and we'll see what, what happens. And so I did take it apart and I came up with just basically lining it, um, lining all the, the sections with paper that was more attractive than say this when you take it apart. Um, and so I did that and that was good. And I was able to make a little envelope down here just as I had hoped. And I thought, great, well, there you go, that's easy. But I wasn't thrilled with it. I mean, it's, it's good and it's fine, but really, I tend to like to be able to control, there's that word again, um, but I do, I like to be able to um, influence my own patterns and designs when I'm doing a project. So I went online and I was able to find a, um, an instruction for how to make these sorts of bags. And I did that and then I was able to use any paper I wanted. And so I printed these. This is um, basic scrapbook paper, a 12 by 12 sheet. And same thing, it has a little pocket in it with my little bicycle man. Um, and it worked out wonderfully. I added this paper for another pocket. It was great. So I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna play around with this idea. So I did that and then I started printing other papers and I like this one, this is a piece of regular scrap paper, but then I printed my own pattern on it and I printed my own pattern on the other side. And it just allowed me to do things that are more me, um, which I, I hope that for everybody, that when you're creating things, even when you're using my kits, that you take them and you say, okay, that's great, Christine, thank you, but now I'm gonna make it me. So this was done with a 12 by 12 sheet and this was done but with a 12 by 12 sheet Oops, <laughs> that's not where that goes. Um, and this was done by an eight and a half by 11. And again, it's super simple. Um, it's just some folding. It's not as simple as folding the paper clips. I'll be honest, it's not. But it's not a lot more difficult. So I really suggest if this is the kind of thing you'd like to add into your journal, then you give it a try. Um, and even if you just give this a try, I do do an instruction, a demo of doing this at the end of the video. So even that if you wanna put a little envelope bag in your, in your journal. So to show you here, let's just find a page. We'll use this one. Oh wait, no, I, I, I put a, here. This guy, this guy, this girl, this gal, this, this pocket, I designed thinking, well, it can go in with a belly band and that's how it will stay in the journal. Um, whereas you could just as simply glue it in as a pocket itself glue only three sides and stick it in your journal. And then you'd have the pocket, the bag, this pocket, this tuck spot, and an envelope. So that was something that was sort of fun. And the same with this. This is, this is the eight and a half by 11 sheet that I started with. Same thing, you could just put it in as a pocket itself. And then, you know, and then you'd have space here back here and then a whole bag space in there plus this tuck spot plus the envelope and then this I realized well this is pretty perfect even if it were put in as a, a pocket to keep them closed and make sure that anything you've put in the bag is um, protected and can't fall out so that's what we're doing I'm going to show you how to do the 12 by 12 the eight and a half by 11, which is trimmed down, the white borders taken off, and the actual just, here's how you um, line a, a, a prefabricated bag, a bag you just simply take apart. So if any of this is interesting, hang around and we'll get to it. All right, so here we have a piece of 12 by 12 paper, and it was this pattern. Um, onto which I printed one of my own patterns, and then I printed one of my patterns on the back of this piece of scrapbook paper. Um, it wasn't something I thought I would use, 
So I thought, let's experiment with it. So we're gonna use this to make the next bag envelope. And the first thing I'm going to do is just drop this um, little bit of a cuff off the top because I want it to be a little bit smaller than 12 by 12. And even this, I, I maybe should take a little bit more. Um, let's see, maybe I will, just a little bit more. All right, so that's going to be a cuff on the outside. And then this and this will be the rest of the outside. So the first thing we have to do is fold the paper in half and leave uh, three eighths to a half inch of a flap here. Let me get this so that it wants to actually fold. And we're going to use that to seal up the bag. I'm going to come in here because this doesn't seem like it's, there we go. It's a little jammed up in there. All right, so here, now we're going to fold this flap closed, but it won't be closed yet. And I'm going to open it up. And we don't need this area. We want to just take that right off. So I'm going to just flip, flip the paper over open and trim it because it's just going to jam things up. So let's just get rid of it. There we go. Okay. So we don't need to do anything with our little cuff that we made, but we need to, well, I'm going to tidy that up a little bit. Now we want to add glue or I'm going to use tape because it's faster for our purposes today. So let's put it on our little flap here. And when you are using tape, you wanna make sure that none of it's peeking over because you don't want it to connect to the inside of the bag in any way. Then you wanna miter the corners, whether or not you're using tape or glue. You might as well just miter those corners and get them out of the way of that corner in the bag. Okay, so this is my front, this is my back, there we go. All right, so now I'm going to, with patience, remove this tape. There we go. Oh. Beautiful. And remembering that it's usually pretty happy to stick the minute it touches something. And come over and lay it down. Yeah, I could have maybe done a little better, but that won't be any big matter. I'm not going to trim it or anything. So now we have our little cuff area, our inside outside for contrast. And now we're going to fold up the bottom. We're going to do that about, I don't know, two and a half to three inches. It's sort of up to you. Um, the, the width of the bag is dictated not by this fold, but by how much paper is left after we do some of these vertical folds. So now we've done that. Now we want to take one corner, either corner, and fold it down to the bottom. So, oh, I'm noticing I don't have my light on. I hope you guys can see, and I will turn the light on right now. Hold on. And it's going to be really bright. Sorry, now I'll turn it down a little. Sorry about that, I didn't notice. It's really bright in the studio right now, so it wasn't like I was abs absent light. It's just that there was not enough light for you to actually see what was going on. But I think you got the gist of it. Okay, so you wanna do each of these corners, fold it down to the bottom. And you're gonna open it up, and it's gonna create a little boat or a pocket. And now we want to fold these sides into a triangle. And I find that it's easiest to do if you kind of poke the corner. There's one, and the second one always comes a little easier, even still. And there we go. All right, now we just have to fold each of these sides, and we want to fold them, you know, maybe half the distance 
Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. I'm never really sure. But let's say here. And we want to make sure that all of our folds and creases are crisp and deep. So we want to really burnish them with a bone folder or the part of scissors. I've used these before. Um, whatever you have. A butter knife. A nickel. They all work. So now we want these folds here to start at generally the same place. So let's do it to here. That looks pretty good, generally. Then, if you were creating a bag at this point, you would actually glue all of this closed. You'd glue these flaps together, but we're not doing that. Now we're gonna take this corner, this angle here, and we wanna match it up with this angle here. So to do that, you just kinda of coerce the, the end to fold, but don't worry about the end. The, the, the part you wanna stay focused on is this meet up here. There we go. So you see, this folds like that. Then you can come back up here and convince the rest of the paper to go in the direction you want. And again, this crease particularly is important to um, burnish very well because we're going to reverse that fold later. And it helps a lot if we have a good strong fold to begin with. So now we're doing the same thing here on this side. We're just matching up the two angles and then we're going to fold there. So you can already see the beginnings of our envelope down here. And now we're gonna come here and make sure We've got good, strong creases. All right. Now we just open up our bag. Stick our hands in. Oh, there we go. Stick our hands in and pop out all of our corners. So now remember I said that this fold, this middle fold on each side is the one we're going to reverse. So it's a mountain now and we want to make it a valley. And then when we do that, sometimes it's easier to just open up the bottom of the bag. We'll refold that later. When we make that a valley, we then just want to match up the other two peaks, the other two mountains. Okay, so that's good and burnish. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. The middle mountain, we're going to invert. There we go. And then we're going to take the two folds surrounding it, match them up, and burnish. Right, so then, once we get down here, we're going to fold fold our bag closed again. So that simply push the sides in like so. And you can see now this area here, this fold, we want to pinch. So see that square, the square bottom, we want to pinch it. And you'll see we can push it up pinching it on both sides. So here, I'm just going to pinch, 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 and burnish. And that is basically how we get our envelope. So now, close this and close this, and we have a little envelope here. And you can see that the way I changed the uh, pattern a little bit, will dictate how 
what shows and what's contrast or what matches. And I kind of like, I like it like that, I think. No, I don't know, it's always so hard to decide which side should we fold the envelope to. Because if it goes this way, it would be this way. I don't like that vertical change there on this side. I feel like it looks better on this side. So that's how we're gonna go. So then, that being that, it's simply a matter of making this our envelope. And that's really it. So we wanna do a couple of things. One is we're going to trim off this area so that it becomes a, an easier flap and a way to get that you can actually insert things into the envelope. So going to just find our crease and trim to the end on both sides. It's definitely easier to see on the light paper. Okay, see that? And now we can take away some of this paper. So we want to just kind of look at, okay, where's our, our top and bottom of our envelope going to be? Now, normally I cut this a little bit and just trim it down. So let me do that now. I might do it again after I cut this away. But for now, let's say it could be down here. I'm just trimming a little away. Now I'm trying to match up to that same area and kind of eyeballing, taking the same amount. One thing you want to be very careful of when you're doing this cut, you do not want to cut all the way through here. You do not want to be under this fold at all because that is basically the, the bottom of your little tuck spot there. So then there's our envelope. It's a lovely thing. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to see if I can. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can round this edge a little bit. Uh, it's not really, not at least not with this. Um, so it's going to have to stay flat. So then it's just a matter of gluing and we can glue this to this. You can also just cut these off. I like to leave them for stability. If you've watched any of my videos by now, you know I like reinforcements. I like paper to have some, some paper behind it, um, as long as it doesn't bulk things up too much, because it makes a big difference um, in the wear and sturdiness of these areas. So there's that. And now this guy is here. Do this line here. Oh, I could probably take off. I don't need it to go all the way to the top because there's other stuff. I mean, we want it to be able to fit in. Yeah, here I probably could have just trimmed it down further along here. I still could, but I'll just leave it. And I did not foolishly make my my little tuck um, slit for the flap to go into. I'm going to do that now. I just unglued it a little bit. I'm going to put this here and here. I have to open this up and go from one to the other. There we go. That should be big enough. I just was not paying attention there. There we go, could have been a little higher, but that works. And so now I am gonna do two things. One, I am gonna cut this a little bit more. Just cause I'm picky that way. And then put some glue back here and here. Close it back up. And now we can stick our envelope flap in here. Of course I would ink things, but there we have it. Oh no, we didn't we didn't do this part. We didn't make our second flap. So let's do that now. Close that down. a good rub. That 
should stick. And now we have our flap, our envelope, into which we can stick little things. This might fit in there. Then we could take other things, stick them here, any way we'd like. Then what I would do always is put a little thumb hole here because I know that no matter how I insert this into my journal, whether it's glued in as a, another pocket or use as it, it with a belly band so it could be fully removed. I still know this is going to be treated as a pocket. So let's, I cannot see it from here, you guys. Let's pretend that Christine knows that's the middle. And then because we did that, we opened up this area that was folded over. So now we should stick some glue in there. really not incredibly necessary. That should keep that under control. And again, and we can add another pocket here just by taking a piece of paper or yeah, we do paper. This whole thing is paper. I would do paper um, and add just another, another element that could be a pocket here. And then we could add a variety of things into that. But I showed that on a different video, so I'm not gonna go into that now. But here we are, a nice little pocket with an envelope to hide your private things. Yeah, I like little compartments. I'm definitely a compartment girl. And then this could go in there. There you have it. Hi friends, Christine here. And I made a video to show you how to make these little um, bags that could be also include envelopes in their bottoms. And there were some issues with the footage. So I'm only gonna be able to show you a little bit of it. And then in one section, my fat head gets in the way anyway. But I am gonna re-demonstrate re how to make the bag itself um, I, in the, Original video, I made this bag. Um, it's basically from this size, a 12 by 12. And then I made this bag from what we're going to do here, this bag with envelopes and pouches. Um, and then I made using actual bags, which started this whole thing for me and showed you how to just basically take uh, an existing bag apart and line it to look like an envelope and a pouch. So I wanna demonstrate just once more perhaps without issues, technical or fat head wise, um, to show you how easily this is done. So basically what you wanna do is start with your piece of paper and decide what, what will be the inside, what will be the outside. This is um, just one of my designs and it's why I like doing it this way versus using a, in an existing bag is because you get to choose um, the material, what it looks like. This could just be regular uh, scrapbook paper as well. So anyway, moving on. We go with the first fold, which is just a simple fold from left to right, right to left, and leaving approximately 3 eighths to a half inch, let's say. Increase this. And this really is really easy, okay. Then we take this side, it's easier for me to do it this way, and fold it closed. Okay, and again, we wanna crease all of our folds as well as we can. Now that wasn't a very straight fold, which matters to me. And it may matter to the bag, but it matters to me. So there, so now we open it back up and you can glue along this edge. I'm going to tape because it's far more efficient and there's nothing to wait to dry. So let's get the tape here. I'm gonna do the tape. Try and keep it aligned. Make sure 
sure you didn't close it on itself. And then we want to miter these corners. So just on this little flap, because otherwise they will bulk up in, in your bag. You don't want that. Okay, so now remove the tape to reveal the adhesive. Leave the adhesive. <laughs> okay, so now bring this to there and seal it up. Okay, simple enough. Now we're going to fold the bottom up about two and a half, three inches. Um, you cannot kind of just eyeball it. And again, really want to make for happy scores. Now we're going to take one corner, fold it down to the bottom, crease it there. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once we've done that, okay, we're going to open it up. And this is where it's handy if you have like a bone folder or something and just stick it in that corner because we want to open this up, unfold it to become a triangle, just like that. And we want to do that on both sides. And if you use a little pointy thing or even the tips of scissors carefully, um, it gives you a nice crisp corner. So now we are going to fold this, I don't know, about halfway up. Split the difference. And then for our purposes, we want these folds where they start to be about equal if we're going to make it into an envelope. So just be mindful of that, that you want them, you want this and this fold to pretty much line up here, just to give you the best looking envelope. And then you want it to be kind of straight. I can't tell if that's straight or not, but. And then again, really burnish those folds. Okay, so now we have done this far. If you are actually creating a, a gift bag with this, which is what this design is from, then you would want to glue this closed at this point, glue this to this. But we're not doing that because we want to make an envelope. Instead, we're going to skip that part and just take this edge and match it up to this edge. So a little closer to this edge here on the end, this little square we've got going on. We're going to fold that over till it matches that edge. And forget about that part when you're doing it. Don't worry about getting a straight fold. Worry more about getting these two edges to make a nice, neat military corner. Then you could do the rest of the fold and it should fall in line. Okay, now this is very important to get a good crisp um, burnished fold there because we're going to reverse that fold later and it helps to have a, a hefty fold to start with. So we're doing the same thing on this side. Uh, we're gonna match up those corners and then fold down the rest of the way. And I like when they're even. There we go. All right. All the hard parts done. Now we're simply gonna open up our bag. And Pop it open all the way to the bottom. So there you can see there's the bottom of our bag. Makes a nice little square. Now we're going to take this fold that's a mountain. We're going to make it a valley. And we're going to have the folds on each side of it meet up. So at this point, if it's easier, just open the bottom of the bag. We'll refold it later. And then we can, voila, do that. 
We do the same thing on the other side. This fold here in the middle, that's a mountain. Make it a valley. Meet up the other sides. Don't worry too much about the bottom of the bag. And there it is. Okay. Now we want to put the bottom of the bag back together. And that's easiestly done if we open it all the way back up and push down each side to square this back up. Oh, the other thing is it is good. You do want to come in here and pinch this. Just, I find that just pinching it is enough and folding it back up. See how that works now? Okay, let's do it the other side. So come in here, fold that down. Wait a second, let me get it folded down first. That's why it really helps to have your folds sharp. And now you're just going to pinch it up like so. There you go. Beautiful. Now we just refold all of our folds. And then choose which side of our bag we would like our envelope on. And in my case, I don't know yet. For this does it look better this way or is there something going on here like oh I like this more so I, I like seeing the worn away part so I'm gonna make this my front versus uh, this matches see that looks yeah no I like the contrast here showing this envelope that envelope all right so now we have our bag that when we seal up these areas will become a pocket this is a pocket, a bag, and then if you attach it to a page by gluing only these three sides, you get an extra pocket back there. So now we just want to work on the envelope portion. So to do that, it's very simple. Since we use double-sided paper, we don't have to worry about um, lining anything. We just want to come in here and cut along this fold. There, it's in this light, it, this light is so flat, it's hard to see the fold. You will probably be able to see your fold a little better. I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to cut all the way to there. Now, to make this fold a little freer and easier to fold, we're going to remove some of the material here. And you just want to make sure that you don't cut too far into um, the part that's covered by the bottom, because otherwise it will show and you won't like it. So let's say to there, I'm just gonna first come here. That should be good. Yeah, and then kind of go from the same spot and try and hit the same area over here. Now you do need to be aware that do not cut this, this part in here because this is your bottom fold for this pocket. So you don't wanna slice it. So you just wanna take this top layer and make sure you're not cutting it. There you go. Okay, now I always trim this a little bit. I always, again, it's like the third one I've made. But I like a straight edge here. And this is gonna come here. Now I'm gonna create a space where I can make a slit to tuck this in. And we're going to do that kind of high Let's say here and here, and then grab a ruler, yeah, and now we're going to slit, 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 and I'm going to use a knife, that is the easiest way to do this, and I like to put little, um, punched holes at the end of my slit because I think it's pretty but I don't have my punched hole puncher here. So I'm not going to. I'm going to see if I can't round this a little bit with my ever happy chomp chomp chomp. Nice. Okay. There we go. Now take a little glue. And we're gonna glue here to make the pocket. Send that up. And we might wanna 
give it a few minutes to do its duty. And then we're going to come in here, open this up. And I like to glue this closed so that my envelope is envelope-like. So I'm just going to come along this edge and this edge. Close it up. And of course, I would have inked my brains out, but for demonstration purposes, I don't need to do that. Okay, so there we have that. Let's close that up. Oh, and you can also, you, you can close these, I mean, um, glue the, those closed too. There's that cute little envelope. And then you can add another pocket here. And in my case, I'm going to add a thumb hole here, because I know that's going to be a pocket. There we go. And the fun thing, so let's say you glue this down, you know, you might decorate all of this, you can decorate anything. Um, and then you glue this down three sides and it becomes a pocket. You can use our very handy clips to keep it closed, which is super handy. So there you have it. That's how you make, that's how easy these bags are to make. Go for it. So here again, just to show you a couple of the others that were made. And here, the ones that were made by using these bags, which is what started it all. Um, I came across these bags and I saw that. I said, hey, that's, a, that's an envelope. Easy, easy, easy way to do it is to start with a paper bag. If the paper bag has this sort of shape, because that's what made me think to do this, was looking at this saying, huh, that looks like an envelope. So, first thing in this bag, for example, let's take these out because we don't need them. And they come out very easily. I wish the bottom opened up as easily as these guys come out. And set those aside. You might find something to do with them later. So this is now done. I'll put my little bicycle riding fellow in here. Get him out of the way. There's the ideas. This guy, what I find useful for, for opening this up is this little spatula thing that came with the cricket. And so if you have something like that, there we go. I'm gonna open this. So here you're gonna get the envelope without all the folding, but you can't have any paper you want then. And that's what I liked about these, making them ourselves, we get to say, oh, this is coordinated with my journal, or this is for the day, the, you know, the, yeah, holiday or, or whatever. So, but you do get this. So now it's already done. And all of that folding has been taken care of. So now you just have to look at it and decide if you're going to cover it up as I did here and I covered the inside and again this I, I should have glued down I just didn't or you don't have to um, but covered the inside to make it look like the envelope so that's what we can do now just by using little scraps of paper we can cover the parts of these that we want so, in case of this, we could just find a piece of scrap here that will fit it. Remember, always check the diagonal because it often gives you more, more space. This one's a little bit narrow. There we go. This one will be great. So I'm just going to come up here and I can even use this angle and then grab a pencil, trace. I can barely see it, but I can see it. And then I'm going to trim just inside my lines, because that will give me a little bit of a boundary. And there. 
So that was this guy. So we can add that here or add it in here to make that prettier. We can also, now here's an idea, something we might do. Instead of doing what I did, we could make a larger flap even. So that could be fun. Let's try that. Let me take this paper and I'm going to, instead of cutting it here, I'm going to draw my line straight down and continue it. I'll get the ruler and continue that this way. Turn this over and do the same thing. I don't think I can fold it and do it. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it separate. And then so you can see I'm not cutting it there. I'm going to cut it straight there. For the fun of it, I'm going to use a knife because it's a straight line and I cut better straight lines with a knife. Okay, so this would be the size. Actually, this is full size. I didn't cut smaller. I think that's going to work in our favor. I'll use scissor cutters, feel free to snip away. And oh, I didn't notice I was a little off on this edge. It's okay. Now, we can do this. We can actually cover this whole, sh this whole side and glue this together and have a nice point here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start, I'm going to use a skinny glue because it's fast drying and not mess making. Well, not as mess making. Okay, so I'm going to add this. You know, if you can get these chunks of glue off or chunks of paper, not a bad thing because then you'll have a nicer finish under the paper that you're gluing. Glue this onto here, like so. Sorry, I've scooted down a little bit on my workspace. So, it's been a crazy, crazy week again. I celebrated my birthday this week, which was a great deal of fun. And each year on my birthday, I um, do a cartwheel. And I've been doing that since I was about 35. And I can tell you I'm not 35 anymore. And every year I'm a little more, I'm not scared. Um, it becomes more challenging. So yeah, so let me say I'm a little more scared um, of flinging myself toward the earth. Um, luckily it has always worked out and I could still do a cartwheel. I have a friend, I have a few friends who've started doing it after I, they learned I was doing it. And um, one of them hasn't done it now in two years and she, and her birthday's around mine. And she mentioned that she's just afraid now. So it's like, uh, I get it, I get it. And we're also all at the point in our lives and this would go for anybody at any point where the last thing you want is to um, hurt yourself by being ridiculous. So there's that and then we could definitely round that corner. Okay, so I like the black with this. Now we could line these parts because that looks kind of eh. So what do we think about the green? Let's see, if we put the green here. And, the, and leave the black. Yeah, kind of like that. We're going for that. Okay, so now it's going to be just simply a matter of tracing this. Which would be easier to do. If I line this up, I can always trim this off later. And give this a little huge, huge, huge. And let's cut, 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 cut. 
hope that's close. It is. So now I'm going to glue this and then I'll trim it on this edge where I, I can see already it's too big. Oh, I have a booger. So now this is going to change how we make this an envelope though. Do we care? We're going to wind up cutting that off. That's all. We're good. So glue, glue, glue. I don't know if any of you have rituals that you do like cartwheels on your birthday. I also do cartwheels every time I visit a foreign country. Um, and then one time I was in Japan and with a bunch of photographers, I used to be a photographer, I'm still a photographer. I used to make my living as a photographer. And we were in Japan and I was doing my cartwheel and I started to hot dog a little and a friend was filming it. Um, colleague and I did three cartwheels in a row across this really lovely little Japanese village road and on that third one I pulled a hamstring and of course I didn't let anybody know that but I did so my flight home was not as uh, comfortable <laughs> as it should have been so okay we want to get some glue in there See, this is why I like to print my own, and then I could just have stuff printed already on both sides. But I know for some people, first of all, printing on two sides is a pain, or can be. And also, you don't want to do all the folds, and that's the whole point of using the bags, so that you can use up the bags. Okay, so that's good, and that's good. Now we have to do this side. Do I have any more of that green? Oh, I hope so. Hmm, hmm, didn't think of that when I used the green. It appears not. I have this little piece here, but I don't think it's going to be big enough, but let's see. Any way that it works? It almost works this way. Oh, so close. And since this is going to get glued up ultimately, we'll be, we're going for that. So I'm going to, for this part, Let's do that. Oh, let's get some of this residue off. There we go. And since this is going to get cut off and this is going to get glued in, we shouldn't have any problem here with this little scrap. And that was another of my goals to try and use up some scraps. So that's why I use things like book pages for this one. Um, things that the, even these these are part of scraps so let's leave it lined up there i to get out of there so here i'm going to just cut cut this now just get it away from there and this is glue that i don't need to glue to anything yet so let's wipe that off Put up. Now we trim, 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 trim. And of course, I will ink, but that's a whole different thing. Okay, so now we have our sides done. We need to cut this so that we can actually get something tucked into the envelope part. So I come in with the scissors and trim. I'm going to do both sides. Now, so now we can see we, we have both sides done. And now we want to trim it this way as well. So you want to be careful that you don't go lower than everything can conceal the cuts. So here, I'm going to go just to here. You can always, you can always cut it again. And this part, be careful to not cut this fold under here because that's your upper pocket. 
and that would have a hole in it. So that's there. good and then this part comes up here and this is the part I would glue but not before finishing up this part so the first thing we're going to do is round this corner it is screaming for rounding isn't it let's give it a big round so that when it's our tuck spot or you know our tuck flap we will go right into there oh, come on that's kind of nice okay so we want to make this also before we glue this shut. So we need to mark it. And Christine's gonna try and get it a little bit more centered this time when she slices this. Oh, the glue container needs to be given some attention. There we go. And we're gonna come just to here. just to there and that's a beautiful thing so now there it is ladies and gentlemen um a little envelope made from a bag you know in a bag that you can make an additional pocket by gluing shut here this is a bag or a pocket and then this last part could be a third pocket um and you obviously decorate it. I mean, this is, looks kind of fun. And I have a, a black themed journal that I'm actually working on. Maybe I'll put it in there. But now you can see. And you don't have to glue this and make it envelope-like. I probably will. I don't want that to show though in general. So I'm just going to trim it a little bit more. And then I'm going to glue it. So it looks like that because I like little things I used to make miniatures too yeah I make things <laughs> but I made a whole miniature of my husband's section of an office that we shared and it included his little Mac bag of Doritos more books than any one person should be legally allowed to own I think I still have it. In fact, I know I still have it. Or should he has it. It was fun. And for me, it really is the journey. Once things are made, I get kind of like, oh, okay, well, we made that. Now let's go make something else. I don't know. Maybe everybody's like that. So there we go. Beautiful. So let's put something in here. Here, I keep using the same things because it's what I have on hand. Here we go. I should let this glow dry. And there's a little end part. Goes right in there. There you have it. A couple of different ways. Big paper, copy paper, the bag already assembled. Have some fun. Go create. Be awesome.